Hello everyone, I greet you in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle Newton Silas and today we have a very interesting video to react to and it says that where was your Jesus when I needed him? Oh, okay, this is going to be a very interesting um, video. So guys, if today happens to be the first time of you checking out my channel, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my Facebook and Instagram. And if you have any video you want me to react to, don't forget to drop it at the comment section and I'm going to check it out. So guys, before we get out to the video, I'm a theologian and I make this video not to discredit anyone's religion. This is basically for educational purposes and I believe that at the end of this video we all are going to learn from this. So guys, let's get down to the video and check out the dialogue that happened that resulted for someone to ask, where was your Jesus when I needed him? So let's get down to the video and check it out. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't, don't touch me, number one. Thou, number two, I, 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 what, what, what can I do for you? Thou shalt not judge. Is that a biblical verse? Okay, why did you judge me then? Why did you come here and tell me what to do? That means you're judging me. So, can I, can I help you, ma'am? Yeah, why did you say to that woman, don't judge you? I, I am don't come near me. Well, I didn't say don't come near me. Actually, I was inviting her to a conversation. No, you said, I heard you over there. I heard you over there. And what type of religion are you saying? Well, I'm only preaching about a person that you know as Jesus. Uh, do you believe in Jesus, who um, died, was buried, and rose again on the I cross? I say something to you. Now, can I say out straight to you now? Yes, you can. And I'm saying my opinion to you. Where was your Jesus? when young kids were in institutions and raped and sexually abused and beaten in them institutions. I'm a survivor. My mother is a survivor. My brother is a survivor. My other brother was beaten to death. So you tell me where your Jesus was. Come on. Just tell me. Sure, sure, sure. Bad things have happened to me and so many people that I know. And you yeah. want to know where Jesus was? You tell me. I, I'm trying to tell you. I, I will try to tell you. What happened to you doesn't come from God. It comes from the devil. And what happens is your family, your family and your community has opened the doors to sinful and demonic practices, which has caused your city to be infiltrated so by wicked people. And that is a choice that God has given all men and all women to make. Do you want your families to suffer because of your decisions? Now, if you make a decision to waste your money on alcohol and on gambling, you're going to make your kids suffer. Is it the child's fault for your decisions? No, I but have your no child. No, so this is. I, have I no know. I'm not talking no, about no, your no, children. But listen to me first. No, I'm finishing this conversation. You're finishing. Okay. No. So you don't want a conversation. No, I do. Want I'm answering your question no, you're not as to where sin ha comes from I and why no you children. went through what you went through. I the have... reason why you went through what you went through is because of the human heart and the sinful actions of people, your parents, your community, that has opened the door and it's affected everybody else. It's sad. So this is why, so you wanna know where Jesus daughter. was. No, no, you wanna know where Jesus was. Jesus was on the cross, dying for sins, and before that, he was calling people to repent of their sins. Yeah. But your family, your ancestors, have decided to not repent of their sins, and it's affected you, which it shouldn't have happened. And I'm grieved for what you went through. God is grieved for what you went through. And all those who harmed you and did that will have their day before God. And if they don't repent, they will be sent to hell. They will face the wrath of God for what they did to you. God is going to bring justice to every man. So in the meantime, don't let your past become your burden forever. Let go. No, no, listen to me. is not bothering me now. Okay, I'm just good. saying to you. So I'm telling you where Jesus was. No, Jesus was you, there. No, you're not listening to me. My past is not bothering me anymore. I've, I'm doing what I want to do now. And I have an 89 year old mother and she's still living now. And I'm minding her and her past isn't bothering her anymore. And it hasn't bothered her, my brother anymore. We got help for that and we're doing what we want, and we're happy now, 
and I will not take this. I'm do. I have no religion in the world. I am happy the way I am. I know there is a God. Don't get me wrong. I do know there is a God. So don't get me wrong. I know that well. But I just hate this preaching, and I just. It's just that abuse is abuse. Like I you know. Agree. I agree. Do you understand where I am coming from? Absolutely, and this is, please hear me out for one second. I will now, okay, but, but I, I, I just wanted to finish my conversation because I don't like being interrupted when I'm saying a conversation. I understand. I understand. Now you can talk. Yeah, so, so I, I think what's happened now is exactly what the devil, the enemy, wanted. He used, listen, I'm not saying your mother or dad is, is bad people. They're not. I don't know them, right? But... When our parents make decisions to go to places like, say, the Roman Catholic Church, and there's preachers saying, hey, don't worship, uh, don't put idols in your home. Don't uh, pray to things that ought not to. And they resist preachers. They say, you know what? You preachers are crazy. They don't read the Bible. They bring their churches into, they bring their kids into a place where there's idolatry. The very thing that God said not to do, they bring their kids there. Their kids get affected by the very things that God said not to do. And then you suffer, and then now you have to ask, why did this happen? We have to trace it back to where the root began. I'm not saying your parents intended that. Nobody, my parents I'm not saying that. My parents put me into an institution. No, no, my parents were both in institutions. I only found my parents about 20 years ago. One is dead, my father is dead now. Jesus Christ. Okay, so, so did you have parents? Nothing. Did you did you, who, who I only raised you? Found the nuns raised me. Okay. So, so Okay, my, so I don't know parents. Okay, okay. So I don't know the exact history of how you got into the church or why, but I do know that the decisions we make, whether your parents' decisions, whether their parents brought people into situations, you shouldn't have been raised by your nun, the nuns, you should have been raised by your parents. But how did your parents get into a situation to have children that they couldn't handle? I don't know where what was going on with them, and I don't know what was going on with their parents. But I can tell you the root of every bad decision, and it's sin. When we go against God, we make decisions that have repercussions on everybody else. So what I'm saying is all the world faced death because of one man's decision, Adam and his wife. They decided to rebel against God, and we face the consequences of everything they've done. We're not in the Garden of Eden anymore because of one man's decision. But because of one man's decision, Jesus Christ, we can now be delivered from our sin, set free from our bondage, and we can be brought back into God's kingdom. So it's not the preacher that you should hate. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. I'm not a Roman Catholic priest. I don't follow... I, never said you I, were. I know. I don't follow Roman Catholicism. But what I am saying is that Jesus is against the abuse that you went through. Jesus Christ never said for anybody to be abused. If, in fact, he's against hypocrites. He's against abuse. And he, he's going to judge every liar, every abominable worker, every wicked man, every sexual immoral person will find themselves in the lake of fire, whether they're priest, whether they're pastor, whether they're an individual. Every person living in unrighteousness will not inherit the kingdom of God. Justice is coming. But in the meantime, you have to look at yourself and say, do I need a savior? Am I a sinner? I do I need a savior? No, I, know there is a, I know there is a God. And I pray to a God, and I know that there is a God, definitely know there is a God, but I will not go anywhere near, I, I, know, I won't go near a church or anything, I just do my own thing. I would say a prayer, all right, but I will not go near a God. I, okay. I have my own, I say a prayer, I believe in that there's a God there, all right. But, but, but you see the problem here. I'm going to show you what the problem is. You see, what happened... No problem. Okay, I'm going to tell you something from my opinion. You see, what happened, something hurts you and it caused you... It's not hurting me anymore. Okay, okay, but something... Okay, I'm not saying it's hurting you now the same way. Don't but Okay, don't, you put it on me or whatever. But some, something bothered you, something harmed you, something affected your life that destroyed your relationship with the church, destroyed your relationship with others, and now you're at arm's distance. You say, I don't want 
relationship with people. I don't want to be close with people. Stay away from me. And this is action. Okay, you're not exactly saying that, but you know what? The church has people just like you. We are people just like you. If you say you believe in God, there's other people that believe in God, and we all need each other. You need the doctor, but you're not running away from the hospital. You, you need your family. You're not running away from your family, but they have problems too. Everybody has problems in the world. So why don't you run away from them too? Why don't you say, I'll no. never foot, step foot in a bar. I I'm never step foot in a, will, around a liar. I'm a person that will help people. Like my mother was, um, like I had to, um, I caught my mother on time yesterday. Cause um, she, I had to bring an, get an ambulance for her. She ended up taking a stroke. So. No, no I, I'm not saying you don't help people, but it's hard to help people when you don't want to be around and people. people. It's oh, a, I do be around people. I, I am um, function. I go out every day of the week, and um, there was one, there was one wish I had, and um, I got my wish. I've been in concerts. I've been in the High Hopes Choir. I've sang with Ed Sheeran. I sang with the script, Imelda May, and all. But do, do you realize that all these concerts, all these places that you went I have, really have people I... that are rapists in there, you have pedophiles in there, you have drunkards in there, adulterers in there, fornicators, people that have abused children, all in these concerts. Do you realize that? But yet you step foot in those concerts, but you won't no, step foot I in the church. Sing. I sing in the concerts. Okay, so why don't you sing for God in a church? You see, you're, you're, what's your, what's I your... am singing in Christ Church. So you go to a church? In Christ Church for Christmas. Okay, so, so that's wonderful. Uh, that's wonderful that you didn't fully distance yourself from the church. All I'm saying is, is that everybody has flaws in their life. And no matter where you go, if you if you come to this city square, I'm sure if you open up the books of everybody's life, you're gonna find some really ugly things in their lives. So what I'm what I'm trying to say, hold on, what I'm trying to say is this: God, through His Word, has showed us that the church is against abuse. The church is against sin altogether, and the church should be holy. So when you go to church, the right church, not the wrong church, not the one full of idols, not the one that's praying to the wrong things, the one that prays to God, when you go to the right place with people that have a pure heart, you're going to be in a better place than the concerts, the pubs, and all of these places. And these are the places that we should be on our regular. So don't run from from places because one man long ago, two men long ago did something to you. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. No, no, Jesus no, Christ, the one we call Jesus Christ, died, was buried, and rose for you and for all people that would believe. But you just need to humble yourself and say, you know what? Yes, I know they sinned. I'm, I'm angry with what they did. I'm but, not angry but, anymore. Okay, not angry anymore. You forgave. Amen. That's wonderful. Yeah. But I too have made mistakes in my life and I need mercy. I need forgiveness. Everybody does. Everybody does. Amen. And so now we just have to now just be humble and say, you know what? Somebody might let me down. These people have let me down. But Jesus Christ will never let me down. God will never let me down. And I'm, and I'm willing to let him be my savior. And I'm going to follow him according to the word of God and be a humble person and one day I'm going to see him and I'm going to get justice for all those people that have done me wrong. I'm going to see him as well. I'm going to see him as well. Well, the Bible says that if we're going to see him, we must be born again. We must have a born again experience. And, and this says it in John chapter 3, verses 3. It says, unless a person is born again, he cannot see or enter the kingdom of God. So my question is for you. Can I say one yeah. more thing? I died four times and they resuscitated me and I seen the gate to heaven did you go in the gate or were you outside the gate outside the gates okay so the Bible says something in the book of revelations it says and I, and I can show it to you I, I mean but I can read it to you I'll say, say what I know from mine it says that those who are born again those who are right with God will be inside the gate those who have sin that is not accounted for, not paid for yet, will be outside the gate. But it also says that if you're living right now and you can say with your heart, I need Jesus as my Lord and Savior, please forgive me. 
I, I, I don't want to live in sin anymore. If you can humble yourself, say, Lord. I wasn't sinning. No, no, I'm not saying you're, you were sinning at the, in that dream, in that vision that you had. But what God is saying now is that if you can just say, I have made sins in my past. I have done wrong. Oh, everybody has. Right. And, and if you can say, Jesus, can you please come in my life and be my Lord and Savior, forgive me. Forgive, yeah, if, if you yeah, can do I that, that. Would, you, yeah. would you like to pray with me even right now? Let's, let's pray together. Let's pray together and, and, and accept Jesus. And, and, then, and, and, then, and then when you see the gate again, the see. gate will be open. Have a seat. Have a seat. Come on. Somebody praise the Lord. <laughs> well, like the license, I said my speech. Amen. Have a seat and let's pray together. Let's pray together. Okay. Don't ask me to say prayers now. What? Well, we we're gonna Don't pray. Tell we're them not we're to put we're, that okay. camera on me. We're gonna pray together. Okay. So, let, let, let's close our eyes together. We're gonna pray together. Me and you. Oh, I can't. And I want. make me dizzy. Okay. Don't close your eyes. Keep your eyes open and, and pray this prayer with me. Say, Our Father, Our Father, who art in heaven. Who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. You sent Jesus to die for me. And I accept what Jesus did for me on the cross. Jesus, come in my heart to be my Lord and Savior. I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me. I turn away from these bad things. And I ask you to come in my life, change me by your Holy Spirit. I invite you in my life, and I pray this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> I have decided, sing with me. To follow Jesus, I have decided, sing with me, to follow Jesus. I know you know this song. I have decided to follow Jesus. Don't be so religious that you can't sing with me. Turning back. No turning back. Come on, somebody sing with me. I have decided. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Now listen. I'm sorry I have to get that out. No, no, I'm glad you got that out. Yeah. Because you got to get that out. Yeah. You got to get it out. You know, sometimes in life we think that we got to bottle everything in. Yeah. But, you know, the Bible says that we need to call upon the name of the Lord. Yeah. We need, we need to confess our sins. The Bible says cast our cares yeah. upon the Lord because he cares for you. You see, you came here initially saying, you know, I don't really like the preaching, but, but end up we praying together. Yeah. Because God was reaching out to you. Because he loves you so much. Amen. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, I'm, I'm, uh, where's, where's Janet? Where's, where's Janet? Never around when I call. Janet from another planet. Am I going to get a box of chocolates now? Am I? I have, a, I have a better gift for you. Hold on one second. Hallelujah. Whenever you come to do a mission trip, focus on the mission. Hallelujah. This is a nice pen. I say pants. It's a pen from our church, and I'm going to give you a pamphlet. And uh, uh, I'm going to, do you have a phone number we can keep in contact with you? Uh, I don't like giving my number. Okay, you don't have to give out your phone number, but if you'd like to, do you have access to the internet at all? Okay, that is a website there. And in Dublin, we're, 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 we're getting a, a community with people like yourself that love Jesus and, and, and want to do the right thing and help the community and, and, see, and, and, and see the whole city of Dublin change. 
So we would like you to be involved. I somehow. hope it will change. Me too. Me too. This country is terrible now. Absolutely gone to hell. Well, we're hoping to save as many people from hell as possible. I think actually this is our hell as well. Well, it, it, it's becoming like it, but it's yeah. uh, it's even worse. Yeah. And that's why we call out to people to repent of their sins. And, and, and uh, you know, the next step is to get you, get you baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That's right. That's right. Oh, that's where I got me vaccine. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, well we're going to keep praying for you. And uh, I'm so glad we met. Yeah, me too. God bless you. Wow, what a turnaround. What a turnaround. I know some of y'all were probably like, hey, this preacher's crazy. Well, I'm so crazy that I'm willing to go the extra mile for Jesus. Why? Because he went the extra mile for you. Hmm, that's a very interesting um, video watching this um, preacher and the lady. Of course, she was asking you know, a question. Where was your Jesus when I needed him? Of course, um, what that do happen to humanity is sometimes we do face trials of faith. And when we face trials of faith, of course, so many things in the begin to happen to us. You could see tribulation in the stand happening to us and so many things that we do not expect. And that's why you see she was talking about how her brother was beaten to death. And then also how um, young women are being raped. Where is God? God is just sitting up in the sand over there at the throne and it is watching everything. This life is just like a true test, of course. It's just a test. And all these things in the stand is going to take time. And then as it progresses, of course, it has an end. And when you have an end, of course, everyone is going to have a reward. All of us, in a sense, have been here or not. In one way or the other, probably you must have listened to the word of God. And of course, we all understand God's um, commandment. But is all of us following his commandment? I do not know. But it's been expected that all the word that God has given to us through various innocent prophets, since from Adam down to Jesus and Muhammad, depending on your faith that you are into. And of course, all those ones in a sense have preached in a sense about God. But then if you are not able to accept God and then repent, of course, you understand, you will be condemned to eternal hellfire. That's according to the guidance he have sent to us. Now, just like I said in life, of course, we face so many things. Sometimes you begin to ask yourself in the same question and says, if God in a sense is even there. But God is somewhere in a sense sitting and still watching you. It's just that he's just trying your faith. Of course, we could look at Job for instance. Job goes through a lot, of course, to the point that of course he lose all his children, all his belongings and all to the point that the wife advised him that why don't you just curse your God and die. But then God, Job in a sense never relented. He still hold on to God. And all those things in sense came to pass. And the Bible makes us to understand that Job got more than double fold. Now, when you look at in a sense, the conversation that that young lady in a sense had with the preacher, of course, in one way or the other, ours may not be actually in a sense rape or about somebody in a sense dying, but it could be about expectation. Of course, all of us as humans have expectation. There is something that we all wish that we get from God and if those things in a sense don't come to pass and then we begin to ask ourselves in a sense so many questions if God is really watching if God is even in existence in the first place but we pray that ours in a sense will not reach in a stand that level don't forget what God says in his word that he will not allow us in a stand a temptation that we cannot overcome everything that shall happen to us God already know that we can overcome we have seen our Lord Jesus Christ of course he was tempted after he fasted for 40 days 40 night the enemy came in a sense and then tested him and then he'd overcome how did he overcome it you overcome it by saying it is written and that is why it is good as believers that we should continue to study the word of God because that's the guidance that will always make reference to it and that's why I see everything Jesus Christ in a sense was doing he always make reference to the word and says that for it is written so now 
as it is written that is where we now get our feed because as you make your references of course you are making it in a sense based on what in a sense God has said in this world and we know that God will not fail whatever he says will surely come to pass and that's why he said in his word that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God mm -hmm. and how do you hear by the word of God you hear by the word of God when you study it when you meditate on it day and night then God begin to reveal the innocent itself to you so it's my prayers that let's try to adhere to God of course let's continue to seek him you understand in all we do and he's gonna be with us till the end so guys this is the end of my video if you like my reaction if you like share and subscribe and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and i'm going to check it out so guys you remain blessed